مرحبا okay. in, in this session we want to talk uh, about how many primes there are okay so remember we started listing the primes the first prime is 2 then 3 then 5 the third prime is 5 then 7 then 11 then 13 and okay we said and so on so what do you think of these dots do, do does this sequence uh, remains running forever or at some point we will stop where there are no more primes okay so the answer to this question was known to the ancient greeks like 2300 years ago okay and there is a proof to the fact that there are infinitely many primes in uh, uh, <coughs> in a book called the elements okay and the author of so this is the elements and the author of this book okay is called the greek mathematician euclid of alexandria okay so euclid was, was working in alexandria so this is this is 2300 B, uh, years ago okay so this is sorry 300 bc okay so 2300 years ago so this is what we will do in this session okay so we want to prove this theorem so this this famous theorem in mathematics that there are infinitely many primes There are infinitely many primes, and this is uh, very nice because I mean prime numbers are nowadays used in uh, in the technology of uh, communication in ciphering and deciphering messages. So all of the communication are secured, digital communication are secured because we have the theory on our the theory on number theory, which is the study of prime numbers. Okay, so let's prove this. So what is the proof of this statement? So this is a statement, okay, there are infinitely many primes. We want to prove it by contradiction. So assume not, okay? So assume that there are finitely many primes. So for the sake of contradiction, for contradiction, let's assume not and we need to get to a contradiction so for contradiction assume there are finitely many there are finitely many primes okay let's say these primes are p1 p2 p3 and up to pn okay so there are n primes and there are no more. So among all the integers, there are only n num integers which are prime numbers and the rest are not. So suppose this. Now, consider, so here p1 is 2, p2 is 3, p3 is 5 and so on. And at some point, there are no other primes. Okay, so here's a full stop. Now consider the num the integer, consider the integer Okay, let's call it M. What is M is the product of all these primes. So multiply P1 times P2 times P3, multiply all of these primes and add one at the end. So if the primes say are just two, three and five, then multiply two times three, six times five, 30, and then add one. So 31 is this uh, M. Okay, what is next? Now we want to apply the fundamental theorem of arithmetic to M. So by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, there M, okay, so what, what do we know? M is the product of primes. M is a product of primes. So, and what primes? We only have these primes. One, one of the, so M is the product of some collection of these primes, okay? 
this means so one of the, choose any one of this prime so there is so there is a prime p which divides m okay since m is the product of primes then any prime of these it divides m okay now since so notice that the p should be some pi for some i between 1 and n right because since p is prime and we only have these primes so these are the only primes then this p which divides m is one of these so let's call it pi so suppose this pi is the one which divides m okay so so pi divides m and what does it mean that p divides m that there is an integer k such that m is equal to k times pi right this is by the definition of divisibility okay now let's write what so again m was the product of all the primes they stop at pn plus one now we from here we know that m is k times pi for some prime of these so m is equal to k times pi and so this is i'm just replacing m by k times pi where where k okay where k is an integer this is from divisibility and plus one now we can move this product to the left hand side by subtracting it so k times pi minus this product p2 so remember pi is one of these primes up to pn okay we move it to the other side and then this is equal to plus one okay well, let's say just one okay now what we will do with the left hand side is we want to take pi as a common factor between these two terms so let's take pi as a common factor so here we'll be left with k minus p1 p2 so pi will be a, the common factor here so here we'll be left with pi minus 1 and then pi plus 1 so we just took pi outside and then up to pn is equal to 1 now look what is this this is an integer these are primes they are integers so this is an integer minus an integer so the whole bracket is an integer let's call it r so this means that pi times r is equal to 1 so we just called this whole thing as r so now what do we have here a prime times an integer is equal to 1 do you see a, and this is a contradiction because what does it mean that pi is a prime and the least prime is 2 so this means that there is an integer r which we multiply it by a number which is 2 or 3 or 5 and we get 1 right the only two integers which we which when multiplied together we get 1 are 1 times 1 or negative 1 times negative 1 remember this is an integer so remember that pi is an integer and r is an integer but pi is a prime and so it's bigger than or equal to 2 so uh, this means that there is an integer which we multiply it by an integer 2 or more and we get 1 and this is the contradiction we are looking for so maybe okay so this means so a contradiction we got a contradiction therefore our initial assumption was false so thus there are no finitely many primes which means there are infinitely many primes so there are infinitely many primes and this finishes the proof of this very beautiful theorem which were known to the ancient Greeks 2300 years ago so what is the theorem that there are infinitely many primes again let me say the proof quickly suppose it's a proof by contradiction suppose there are finitely many primes and then we do some manipulation and at the end we get that the prime some prime divides one and this is a contradiction notice that this means that uh, pi 
divides the number 1 because by definition of divisibility there's no prime which divides 1 okay okay so this is uh, the finish of this uh, proof now let me say uh, <coughs> introduce another uh, like uh, special primes they are called the mersenne primes so a prime what is a mersenne prime so a mersenne or this is after a name named after a mathematician so a mersenne prime okay so some of the primes have special property that they are called mersenne primes is a prime number of the form of the form 2 to the power n minus 1 for some integer n so if you have a prime and it can be written in this form 2 to the n minus 1 then we call it a Mersenne prime okay so examples 3 is a prime and it can be written as 2 to the power 2 minus 1 right so it is a Mersenne prime now let's look at uh, 7, 7 is 2 to the power 3 minus 1, 2 to the power 3 is 8 minus 1 is 7, and 7 is a prime, so it's a Mersenne prime. Okay, for example, let's look at 31, 31 is a prime, and it can be written as 2 to the power 5 minus 1, so it's a, it's a Mersenne prime. Now... What do you think of this number? 2 to the power 11 minus 1. <clears throat> okay, it is in the required form, but what is this number? This number is 2047. Okay, but notice that 2047 can be written as 23 times 89. So this means that 23 is a divisor of this number, and it's not 1, and it's not itself. So this is not a prime, okay? So this is not a prime. This number is not a prime, and so it's not a Mersenne prime, because to be a Mersenne prime, you have to be a prime in the first place. Okay, and let me finish this session by telling you about a very famous conjecture in number theory. Remember, a conjecture is a statement which we, we don't know whether it's true or false yet. We don't have a counterexample to show it's false, and we didn't find a proof of it. So to, let me introduce it, that uh, a pair of primes, so a pair P and Q of primes, are called so these two primes are called twin primes if the difference between them is 2 okay so if say q minus p is equal to 2 okay let's have some examples look at 3 and 5 3 and 5 are two primes and the five and the difference between them is 2 Look at 5 and 7. Okay, what else? Look at 11 and 13. Okay, and then look at seven and 17 and 19. So all of these are primes whose difference is 2. And now look at these three dots. Look at the pairs. Does this sequence of pairs, uh, sequence of twin primes, does it end at some point or it uh, goes forever and this is called the twin prime conjecture okay so this is the twin prime conjecture up to this day we don't know whether this sequence stops at some point or it runs forever okay so the twin prime conjecture says are there infinitely many twin primes so you can read about it on wikipedia